Okay, guys, welcome, welcome to today's very special edition of our active recovery. Um, today, we're going to be led by my friend, and a lot of you guys know her already, Dr. Sam. She is a doctor of physical therapy. She's a member of Reach Fitness at Home, and she specializes in helping people with their back pain and um, helping people with how they manage their pain in general. Um, she works remotely. So if you guys want to get in touch with her, she actually lives in the Seattle area. Um, but if you guys want to reach her for like questions or your own stuff that's going on, um, happily, like she can talk to anyone anywhere um, and still be able to kind of like help you with your issues without going into like a regular PT office. Um, and today she's going to take us through some of her best stuff to help people with, um, I'm hoping like prevent back pain or just get like a really nice stretch so that you can, um, be strong through your core and like move in all the directions and really take care of your spine health. Sam, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, you can correct anything that I screwed up and get us started. You didn't screw up at all. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is super fun. Um, yeah, like Rachel said, my specialty really is like beyond just back pain. It's like dealing with people who have had back pain for years and like still can't manage or like still can't get over the hump of like pushing themselves or like bellying up or hitting PRs, like really kind of that middle ground. Um, so that's, that's my jam. I'm super excited to be here. And yeah. So, um, if you didn't see the note, we'll need a foam roller today, preferably if you have a long one that can cover your whole spine. If you don't have a long one, grab a big beach towel and I can show you what to do with that instead. Um, but really my approach to back pain in general is balance and in terms of like muscles, we have three layers of core muscles. And so for us specifically who do Rachel's awesome kettlebell workouts, a lot of the times I see for people who do lift really heavy, part of it is just really learning how to connect with some of those deeper core stability muscles, which we're going to do today. Um, and really just mobility in all planes of motion. Um, so we're going to do that today too, but we're going to start with our foam rollers. So like I said, if you have a long one, I want you to lie on it lengthwise. So your, your tailbone's at one end and your head is supported by the other end. But if you don't, so um, yeah, Stephen, perfect. You're basically just rolling up the towel to recreate a long foam roller just so that it can cover your whole spine. Awesome, perfect. You'll still get the benefit. So just kind of like noticing where your spine touches the foam roll. I think for um, a lot of people too, I see um, tightness through the thoracic and mid back is one really common area of back pain. So just like, can you feel your whole spine on there? Do you only feel your tailbone? Can you feel between your shoulder blades? And let's just bring our arms up toward the ceiling. And then I want you to bend your elbow so your hands come toward your face like you're doing a, a tricep press. And let's just open our elbows out wide. This should feel good after all those push-ups yesterday, getting a good pec stretch. And then bring your elbows and hands together in front of you. So let's just move through like, eight of these arm openers, you'll feel thoracic spine, shoulder blades, a good pec stretch. If you're like me, I feel a lot of crunching in there. And just thinking about like keeping your back nice and relaxed on the foam roll or your towel, whatever you're laying on. Good, and then let's just open our arms and hang out there. Maybe even just kind of like rolling yourself if you are on a roller back and forth, giving yourself a little massage between your shoulder blades. And then let's bring our arms back up toward the ceiling. We're gonna do arm scissors. So one arm just gonna go back overhead as one hand comes by your side and then switch. Same thing, just kind of getting shoulder blades moving, getting that stiff upper back, thoracic spine moving. My shoulders are so sore. Anyone else? I feel like we hadn't done that many push-ups in a really long time. Rachel says yes. Okay, good. That's not the only one. 
Good. And then we're going to kind of combine those two. So let's bring our elbows and hands together in front of us, like we just did with the pec openers. And then you're going to bring your elbows up overhead, try and keep them together if you can. And then when they naturally want to separate, open them out wide, like you're doing a snow angel, and then bring them down towards your side. So your hands and elbows come together in front of you. Keep them together as long as you can as they go overhead and then let them open out wide and bring your elbows down by your side. Let's do about eight of these, just kind of moving nice and slow. Check in with your back. Are you relaxed? Is your butt relaxed? Is your stomach relaxed? Good, bringing those elbows all the way down by your hips if you can to get a really good pec stretch. Nice, when you're done with those, I want you to walk your feet together and your knees together and your arms are gonna go up toward the ceiling and just kind of like wobble there, especially if you're on your roller, you'll notice it's kind of hard to keep your balance. That's just automatically connecting your brain with those deep, core muscles. So if you can, keeping your knees and feet together, you're going to let one arm slowly open out to the side, resisting um, that rotation and that wiggle on the foam roll, and then bring your arm back up and then let that other arm fall out to the side and then bring it back up. Let's do just like four each side. Good. Just kind of letting your brain figure out how to stabilize you. If this is way too frustrating and you keep falling off, you can widen your feet a little bit and give yourself a little bit more stability. But I encourage you to play with it and let your brain just kind of work through that frustration, work through that new, that new connection it's forming. Good. Awesome, cool. Okay, we're gonna just kind of roll off to the side, set your foam roller aside for now. <clears throat> and when you're ready, we're gonna get into the dead bug position. I heard a lot of people are sore from yesterday. I definitely am too. Um, but we're gonna do just a breathing exercise here. So Lying on your back with your, with your legs in that 90-90 position. What I want you to think about is if you had a marshmallow under the arch of your back, I want you to just gently try and smush the marshmallow a little bit. So you're not like forcing your low back into the ground. It's a lot more subtle. You don't want to totally smash the marshmallow, just dent it a little bit. And then I want you to send your knees a little bit farther away from you. So your hips are a little more open. Um, and if you're not used to finding those muscles, you might feel that little shake like you did on the foam roll. Keep that marshmallow smushed as you bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Hands and knees together. And I want you to take a big breath into your back muscles. So what I mean by that is as you inhale, See if you can feel your back, especially like below your shoulder blades and your low back melting into the ground. And then exhale, blow all the air out. Inhale. So as you inhale, you're gonna dent the marshmallow a little bit more. And then exhale, blow all that air out. Let's go two more breaths there. Big inhale into your back, expanding your ribs in the back and the sides. Good, one more time. Awesome, good. Now what I want you to do is you're gonna hug your right knee in towards your chest and your left leg is gonna straighten out. Now I want you to use that right knee and curl your head and neck off the mat. So you're like, curling yourself into a ball, hugging that right knee. Good. You're going to stay curled. And then I want you to just switch legs. So you're really using your leg to pull you a little higher off the mat, dropping that leg down as far as you can. And then I want you to switch. So 
we were just talking about, I can't remember if it was reported or not, but not doing a lot of crunches. This is a Pilates exercise, but I think of it more as a hip exercise and a mid back exercise. So we're using our core, but it's really to use our core to stretch through our hips and our mid back, if that makes sense. So I know we're all sore from our abs. We're going to use them just a little bit more. Let's do two more on each side. See if you can use that knee to pull yourself up a little bit more. Using your breath. Let's go one more each side. Good. And then from here, instead of hugging that knee into your chest, I want you to straighten that leg out. So you're getting a hamstring stretch. Good. We're still curled off the mat and then we're going to switch. So now we're getting a hamstring stretch through our hips as we're mobilizing through our upper back to using our abs. Good. Use your breath. Let's do two more each side. And then we're done with ab work, I promise. One more each side. Oh my gosh, my hamstrings are so tight, Rachel, from yesterday. Good, and rest. Nice, let's just stretch our legs out, stretch your arms overhead. Take a couple deep breaths. Nice. All right. Let's come up to our hands and knees when you're ready. <clears throat> We're going to do some hip cars, which I know we've done before in this class. And we're going to add just a little bit of a twist. So <clears throat> on your hands and knees, we're going to start with hip circles. So I want you to bring your foot up toward the ceiling like you're stamping that knee is going to come out to the side and then bring it back down to center. So let's just do four circles in each direction. And as you're doing this, I want you to pretend like you only have a hip joint and a pelvis. So what I mean by that is try not to let your low back or upper back also help you with the movement. We're just really isolating our hip joint to get all that movement for us. Good, and then when you're done with four, go ahead and switch directions. <clears throat> nice, so now what I want you to do is take the, um, I didn't start us all on the same leg. So take your opposite hand, behind your head. So if you're, if you were just moving your left hip, I want your right hand behind the head or vice versa. So we're going to take our hip out to the side for that hip car. And then we're going to bring our knee and elbow towards each other as we do this rotation to get mobilized through our upper back. And then that knee is going to go out to the side as your um, right hand comes back to center. And then you're going to bring them together and rotate and then open back out. Let's just do six each side. Feeling that low core we just connected to. You'll probably feel your obliques. Using that breath. Nice. When you're done with four, let's switch sides. So let's go four hip circles each direction. I should have asked in the beginning of class if there's any special requests, if you guys have anything that you want to work on or address, feel free to unmute yourselves if you want, shout it out, or you can drop it in the chat. Happy to add that on. Good, switch directions if you haven't yet. Nice, good. So now that hand goes behind your head, hip goes straight out to the side. 
You're gonna bring knee and elbow together as you rotate, blow all that air out, and then open that hip out to the side as your hand goes back to neutral, and then rotate and bring them together. Good, let's go two more. Sam, I was just going to say, no one ever tells me anything to stretch. So I feel like people are just open to whatever you want to deliver and it all feels great. Okay, cool. Well, if anybody thinks of something, let me know. All right, good. Let's just sit back into child's pose real quick. Back on those heels. And I want you to take a couple deep breaths into your back. Like we practiced when we were lying down. So big inhale. And blow it all out. One more time. Good, now I want you to bend your elbows and your hands are gonna go behind your head like you're patting yourself on your back. Maybe you walk those elbows forward a little bit. You'll feel this a lot more in your triceps and lats. And now I really want you to focus on breathing into your back as you inhale. Go two more like that. Nice, awesome. Come back to your hands and knees and then I want you to push back into a down dog. I didn't do Monday's workout, but I saw in the WhatsApp chat that everyone's calves were really sore. So this should feel good. You can kind of like, pedal your heels back and forth if that feels good let's just hang out here for a second actually my calves are kind of sore too what did we do yesterday that would have made them sore okay now i want you to bring your right knee forward towards your right elbow and then we're gonna place that right leg on the ground, that right shin. So pigeon pose, if you're a yogi. And what I want you to do here is stay upright. We're gonna rotate and look over that right shoulder and then rotate and look over your left shoulder. Let's do that about eight times and just kind of noticing if one direction, your hip feels tighter than the other, if you, Feel it in different places. This is one of my faves. Good. And then when you're done with the rotation, if it feels good, just kind of bringing your forearms down to the mat, sinking into it a little bit. If that feels too intense, you can stay up on your hands, but we're just gonna sink into this glute stretch, this pigeon pose. You can still even kind of like wiggle your hip back and forth if that feels good, or just relax here, take a few deep breaths. Good, let's switch sides. So let's push back into down dog. Again, you can pedal feet back and forth or hang out there for a second if that feels good. And then whenever you're ready, let's bring left knee to left elbow and then place that left shin on the mat. Take your time. Noticing if one side feels tighter than the other. And when you're ready, let's rotate. Whew, this side is way tighter on me. Looking over that right shoulder, looking over the left shoulder, maybe hanging out on one side for a minute if that feels good. One thing I find too with, like if you are dealing with back pain and you do a lot of, um, lifting high intensity stuff like we do with kettlebells. Um, you may already know this, but stress can really be such a huge, huge factor. I actually had two clients this morning. They both had flare ups this week and 
we were talking about it and they didn't do any new exercises. They didn't increase their weight. One had their parents in town staying with them and one had a group trip with people that she didn't like. So like clearly a lot of stress and just really being able to tie it back to what else is going on that could be causing stress. And, you know, with these high intensity workouts, it's a good stress we put on our bodies, but I find even for myself, like jumping straight from a workout back into work. And then like, I don't have kids, but if you're taking care of the kids and running around, like your nervous system is just kind of in this constant state of heightened, um, stress, whether it's good or bad stress. So even just taking like five breaths during the day or after our kettlebell workouts can be super beneficial just to kind of bring your nervous system back down a little bit. Take one more breath here on this left side. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to come up to sitting and do one of my favorites. I know Rachel's done this in class too, the mermaid stretch. So I want your left foot in front of you. Your left knee is going to be bent with your left foot in front. And then your right knee is bent and your right leg is off to the side here. If that doesn't feel good on your knees, you could like sit up on something or even just cross your legs will work too. Your left hand's going to go behind your head and we're bending to the right. Good. Take a big breath. Like see if you can expand into those left ribs when you inhale. Good. And then exhale, reach that arm overhead. And then big inhale, breathe into those side ribs. And then exhale, reach. Let's do three more breaths like that. You might even feel a stretch in your hip with this too. Good. And then bring your hand behind your head. We're going to add some rotation. So I want you to rotate your left elbow forward if it feels good. And then coming back through center and then opening up the other way. I feel that a lot in my pecs. You might feel it through your mid back. Let's do a few rotations back and forth. Good. Let's switch sides whenever you're ready. So right leg in front, left leg off to the side. Right hand goes behind your head and let's bend to the left. Oh, take a big breath into those side ribs and exhale, reach overhead. Good. Bring that hand back, big inhale through that side. Couple more like that. Nice, let's add some rotation. So hand behind your head, rotate that right elbow forward and then open up the other way. Let's do two more rotations forward and back. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, we're going to end with a little rotation. So, um, and a little hamstring stretch. So I'd love for your legs to be out in this V position. Um, your knees can be bent if your hamstrings are super tight, or you can like roll up your mat and sit up on it. So you're elevated a little bit. If this is hard for you to sit upright with your hamstring tightness, um, so I want your hands behind your head and I want you to think about your head, like reaching up toward the ceiling. So really lengthening through your spine, taking a big breath in and we're just going to exhale as we rotate to the right. So I want you to really think about like rib cage rotating to get through that upper back tightness and then come back to center and then exhale and rotate to the left. Good. Inhale back to center. So go at your own pace. I want you to do three rotations each side. If this feels like way too tight and intense with your hands behind your head, you can bring your arms out to the side and you might find that you can get a little bit more rotation. But you can just do what feels best for you. 
using your breath, trying to stay nice and lengthened through your spine as you rotate. Good, and then when you're done with that, this time we're gonna rotate to the right. I want your arms out to the side, and then you're gonna fold forward. Try and bring your left pinky to the outside of your right toe, and then restack back up, and then switch. Oh man, so tight. And then inhale back up to center, and then reach and rotate. Good. I even like to hook my hand on my foot and see if I can get like a little more rotation and I feel really good stretch through my upper mid back. Let's do two more each side at your own pace. Again, noticing if one side is tighter, I can get so much farther on one side. Good. When you're done, let's cross our legs in front of us and let's just stretch forward to get those outer hips one more time. And then let's end how Rachel always ends class. I love that um, rotation. So big stretch up and then rotate to your right. And big stretch up to center and rotate left. Let's go one more each side. Oh, awesome. Thanks for joining me. Oh, we have a couple minutes left. Does anyone want to do, did we miss anything that anyone needs? I think that was amazing. And Again. I always Again. think it's so interesting how like you have to hit all of the, you have to hit shoulders and chest and hips and hamstrings and like so many other pieces to like mobility of your spine. It's not like, how do you stretch your back? You kind of stretch everything is a lot of what I've learned from you. And I feel like that this, this past 30 minutes just kind of spoke to that. Like we did everything and we worked our core and, and, and. So it's not just one thing. It's like all of the equivalent. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. And I find that too, especially with low back pain, people think like, oh, I just need to stretch my back out more, but typically it's the areas above and below that are really the issue. Yeah, totally. Okay. So if people want to find you, if they want to connect with you more, how can they do that? Give people the deets. Yeah. Let's hang out on Instagram. I'm at Dr. Sam Chernock. Um, I've got some tips there. Sometimes I post workouts. Um, or, and you can also shoot me an email if you want to be part of my email list. I send, I send stuff there as well. I'll make sure her Instagram is posted on the WhatsApp chat so you guys can follow her and um, yeah, keep the conversation going. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Let's, I appreciate you. Um, let's get our Zen selfie. I almost just fell off my chair right now. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you again so much. And thank you guys for being here. I hope you guys use this recording often. I will give it to you. And I know I'm going to for sure. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.